وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We begin by praising Allah Azza wa Jal We praise him as he deserves to be praised and how as he praised himself subhanahu wa ta'ala And we begin also by asking Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions And we begin by giving assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and giving the salam to all the people watching this short course from Al Madrasatul Umariya on the Muslim family. We're continuing our discussion about the general way that the rights of the husband and wife are laid out. And this is important, and we spoke about the ayah in the previous episode, Walahunna Mithlu Ladi Alihinna, the equivalence that exists and the opposite the, the kind of opposites, the give and take that exists between husband and and wife as it relates to their rights. Before we go into individual rights, we want to look at how the rights are structured. So some of them, there is total equivalence, one for one, and in others, there may not be total equivalence, but there is a kind of a give and take, some for you and some for you. And men have a degree over them, and we spoke about that briefly in the previous episode. I want to come to a hadith which is very important as it relates to the rights of the husband and the wife. It's a very short hadith. It's a hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. It's narrated by Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, Ahmed and others. Women are nothing but the full sisters of men. Shaqaiq, a shaqiqa here. When we say ukhtun shaqiqa wa akhun shaqiq, it means that you share a, a mother and a father because you could have a half brother, right? You could have where you have only share, you only share the father or you only share the mother, but you have a different mother, a different father, so it's a half brother. Here, when we talk about shaqaiq, akhun shaqiq, ukhtun shaqiqa, it's the one that is completely has you know shares the same mother, same father, full brother and sister. So why did the Prophet ﷺ describe women as the full sisters of men? The meaning of this is nothing to do with sisters as in, uh, as in uh, parents, mother and father here. But here it's to do with the rights. And this is actually a beautiful principle, this hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. It's a principle that says to us that unless Islam makes a distinction and makes a clear exception, every right that a man has, a woman has, and every obligation that a man has, a woman has. And that is the, 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 the basic principle in Islam, is that principle of equality in rights and obligations. Until and unless Islam makes exceptions. Now that's really Interesting, because if you look at the way that Islam looks at issues of gender, Islam looks at men and women as being different. And that's why uh, Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَىٰ That men are not like women. The male is not like the female. And who said this? Who did Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in the Qur'an? Who did he inform us at, that this was said by? He informed us that this was said by the mother of Maryam السلام, that when she gave birth to Maryam, she had sworn, I have sworn that what is in my womb will be in service to you, O Allah, i.e. that she would have a son and her son would be in the service of Allah Azza wa Jal, worshipping Allah and serving in the place of worship. When she gave birth to a girl, she realized the reality of how Allah Azza wa Jal created mankind. How Allah created us min dhakarin wa untha. Inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. We created you from male and female. 
and that the male and female are different. وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى She said the males are not like the females. So Islam recognizes that there are differences between men and women. But does that mean that there is an entire series of laws that are just for men and an entirely different series of laws that are just for women? Is that how Islam works? No, there isn't a Quran for men and a Quran for women. Rather, all of the laws and obligations, the default position is equality and equivalence. That's the default position. Until you bring in evidence which makes an exception for men or for women in a particular ruling. For example, we look at uh, clothing. Let's take the example of clothing. So there are certain equivalents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talked about the libas, the clothing that has been given to cover you. وَلِبَاسُ taqwa ذَلِكَ khair, And the libas of taqwa, the clothing of taqwa that is better for you. Some of the scholars who mentioned the clothing of taqwa, the modesty in clothing, and some of them talked about it in terms of taqwa, clothing yourself with the taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal. In any case, here we have an equivalence, modesty in dress between men and women, the same, they are both required to be modest, cover their aura, and so on and so forth. But then we have differences that come later on. So the basic principle is the same, and then comes the issue of the hijab, of the woman and the rules and regulations and the difference between the aura of the man and the aura of the woman and so on. So we want to understand the way that Islam works is that the rules, the regulations, the commandments, the obligations are for men and for women equally until the Sharia brings a difference between them. And we can take this from the hadith, إِنَّمَا النِّسَاءُ شَقَائِكُ الرِّجَالِ Women are nothing but the full sisters of men meaning everything that is said to the men in the Qur'an is said to the women until you have a reason to diverge and a reason to make them different. And there are many rules in Islam that are only for men and rules that are only for women. But when Allah for example said, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَةَ Establish the prayer and perform the zakah. This word aqimu is given towards the men. It's, it's, it's given in the in the form of the verb that addresses men and give the zakah it's given in the form which addresses the men and yet this hadith tells us women are nothing but the full sisters of men so the same command goes for the women that Allah tells them to perform the prayer to give the zakah however there are some things that are unique to the men and some that are unique to the women, and those are well established in Islam. And that's such a beautiful balance. That's the balance of Islam. Allah gave us a religion that is balanced, a religion that is qayyima, deenul qayyima, the religion that is a balanced way and is upright. That yes, we, our basic principle is that all the rules for the men are for the women, unless there are exceptions. And Islam makes plenty of exceptions because لَيْسَ الذَّكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَى Males and females are not the same. That's a basic principle of Islam and it's the fitrah. It's what matches the nature of human beings and it's what will help the marriage to settle. And one of the really things that I personally see that cause a lot of marital discord is this very non-Muslim, very un-Islamic effort of men to be like women and women to be like men. And so the wife is striving to be the husband and the husband is striving to be the wife in one way or another. And it sounds funny in the sense that somebody says, well, that's not really possible, but re you see this reality. The wife is striving to have the rights the husband has that are only for him, that are khasa, bihi. And likewise, the husband is trying to either drop some of the things that are only for him or trying to take something that's a right that is a right of his wife or take it away from her and they're not sticking to what Allah Azza wa Jal gave them. And so we really want to sort of use this hadith as to lay out a foundation in the way the husband and wife interact with each other, that you have that equivalence, that you have that equality, but there will be times when the husband has very specific things that are for him and against him or yeah, any obligations that he has to do. 
and the wife will have very specific things that are for her and are against her or are obligations that she has to do. So that's how we can balance those two out. And we shouldn't be racing for one person to try to take those away or try to sort of absorb some of the responsibilities or even the rights of the others. And that's a lot of times where the marital relationship can break down because the person's not accepting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. And we know, Ala ya'lamu man khalaq. The one who created us is the one who knows how best we should live as husband and wife. Our next hadith is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and it is a hadith an Aun ibn Abi Juhayfa an Abihi radiyallahu anhu qala akha al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bayna Salman wa Abi darda fazara Salman Abi darda fara'a umm darda mutabadzila faqala laha ma sha'nuk Aun ibn Abi Juhayfa narrates from his father that he said the Prophet وسلم, made brotherhood between Salman and Abu Darda. And Salman visited Abu Darda, Salman al Farisi an, visited Abu Darda ta'ala an, and he saw Umm al Darda anha mutabadzila. He saw her disheveled, not dressed nicely. And this is before the time of the hijab, before the verse of the hijab was revealed. So he said to her, Ma sha'anuk, what's the matter with you? And he was, oh, perhaps she's not well, she could be sick, perhaps uh, something happened to her. Why is she not keeping her appearance as you would expect a wife uh, to do? What, what's the matter? What's happened? So he said to her, Ma sha'anuk, what's the matter? Qalat, akhuka abu darda laysa lahu hajatun fi dunya. Faja'a abu darda فصنع له طعاما فقال كل فإني صائم قال ما أنا بآكل حتى تأكل فأكل She said your brother Abu Darda has got no need of this world It's like he doesn't look at me doesn't know I'm here you know doesn't not in terms of looking after me like maybe he spends but he doesn't you know he doesn't have a need of me not that he doesn't look after me he looks after her he doesn't have a need. He just doesn't, he doesn't want me to. He doesn't have any need. And then Abu Darda came and made food for Salman. And he said to Salman, eat the food. But I'm fasting. He said, eat it, but I'm fasting. So Salman said, I'm not going to eat until you eat. So finally, Abu Darda, he ate. فَلَمَّا كَانَ اللَّيْلُ ذَهَبَ أَبُو الدَّرْدَاء يَقُومُ فَقَالَ نَمْ فَنَامَ ثُمَّ ذَهَبَ يَقُومُ فَقَالَ نَمْ فَلَمَّا كَانَ آخِرُ اللَّيْلِ قَالَ سَلْمَانُ قُمِ الْآنِ قَالْ فَصَلَّيَا When the night came, Abu Darda stood up as if he's going to pray. So Salman said to him, go back to sleep. Then he stood up again to pray. Salman said to him, go back to sleep. So when the end of the night came, Salman said, now stand up and pray. So they prayed, they prayed together. فَقَالَ لَهُ سَلْمَانْ إِنَّ لِرَبِّكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ وَلِنَفْسِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ وَلِأَهْلِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ فَأَعْطِي كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَّ Salman, he said to Abu Darda, he said, your Lord has a right over you. And yourself, your body, you have a right over you. And your family has a right over you. So give everyone who has a right over you their right. So Abu Darda, he came to the Prophet ﷺ. Look at how the Sahaba used to be, radiallahu anhum. Came to the Prophet ﷺ. And he mentioned what Salman said. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ صَدَقَ سَلْمَانِ The Prophet ﷺ said Salman told the truth. So this now has the ruling of a hadith. Your Lord has a right over you. You, your own body has a right over you. And your family has a right over you. فَأَعْطِي كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَّ 
give everyone who has a right over you their right. And this is Wallahi Dead. It is from the most beautiful and the most fundamental qawaid and principles that exist as it relates to husband and wife and it relates to all of huquq al-ibad, the rights of people. What is the, the essence of it? How do you know that you are achieving your goals as it relates and your responsibilities as it relates to marriage? Give everyone who has a right over you their right. And again, when we talk about marital discord, most of the people, this is where people fall down. So we see the woman, she comes and she complains that her husband is giving rights to his mother, which is completely correct. And it is no doubt from the greatest of the obligations after the obligation to worship Allah alone, he's giving his rights to his mother, but he's not giving the rights to his wife. So he's not implementing that statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Give everyone who has a right over you their right. Look in this example. Salman was giving a right to Allah. Uh, Abu Darda radiallahu an was giving a right to Allah and he wasn't giving the right to his body and his family. Allah is the most deserving of anyone for you to give his rights to. Yet when it was at the expense of the right that Allah commanded to give to his family, then it wasn't praiseworthy. When it became at the expense of the right that Allah commanded him to give to his body, it wasn't, it wasn't praiseworthy. So if that's true of the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal, then Wallahi is true of every other right, including the rights of the parents, that everything has to be in balance. Likewise, the, the wife, she's given her rights to her children. She's really taken that responsibility for her kids and she's taking it very, very seriously. She's making it very important, but she's neglecting her husband. She's not giving him his rights. Or she's looking after her husband and she's neglecting the rights of her children. The husband is more deserving of her giving rights than even her parents. And yet, Still, she's given rights to her husband, and she's not giving it to her children, or she's not giving it to Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's even worse, that the husband's given rights to his wife, but he's not giving rights to Allah. And you can take in this also, we can bring in this topic of atheism, because the reality is, you know, people talking about non-Muslims who've got really good manners and really kind and really, and at the end of the day, what? They're giving rights to their neighbor, they're not giving their rights to Allah. They're giving rights to their friends. They're not giving rights to Allah. They're giving rights to the environment. They're not giving rights to Allah. That's not praiseworthy. What is praiseworthy is Everyone who has a right over you, give them the right that they have. Give Allah his right. Give your parents their right. Give your spouse their right. Give your children, your neighbor, your even the environment, even the... You know that the environment, the world that you live has a haq over you, has a right over you. Give everyone their right. As for the people who give rights to the birds and the animals and the insects and the trees, and they don't give the rights to Rabbul Alameen, there's no, nothing praiseworthy in this. Or they don't give the rights to their fellow human beings. Or people who give rights to the human beings, but they don't give rights to Allah. Or people who give the right to Allah, but they don't give it to their family. Like this Rahbaniya, like they lock themselves in, in the room and they worship Allah, but they don't care about their family. For all of this is blameworthy. What is praiseworthy is فَأَعْطِي كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقًّا Give everyone who has a right over you, give them, give them their right. Give everybody who has a right over you their right. And that really just gives you that balance. That's what I'm aiming for. It's not about giving my wife 100% of her rights and neglecting my children, neglecting Allah, neglecting my parents, neglecting my neighbors. It's about balancing out the rights to give everyone their rights. And that is possible. Allah doesn't burden a person with more than they can bear. It is possible for you to give your parents their right and your spouse. 
And it's possible for you to give your children their right and also to give the rights to their parents and the spouse and the neighbor. It's possible because our Prophet did it. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum learned from him and they copied him and they did it. The Salaf al Salih, the righteous predecessors, they took from them and they did it. It's possible to give everyone their rights. We're not going to say you're never going to fall short because we're human beings and we're going to, we are naturally khatta, yani we naturally make mistakes and frequently make mistakes. But ultimately, it is possible for you to set out a system and a way of life where you are giving everybody the right that is over you or the right that is your obligation to give to them. When we talk about rights, what is also really important, and we have alluded to this previously, but I just wanted to bring the ayah, is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوا مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ لِلْرِجَالِ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا اكْتَسَبُوا وَلِلنِّسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا اكْتَسَبْنُ وَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمًا Surah An-Nisa, ayah number 32. Do not seek what Allah has preferred some of you with over others. Men have an opportunity or a portion of the reward from the actions they have done and women they have a portion of the reward from the actions that they have done. And ask Allah from His grace, Allah is knowing of every single thing. So right here we have a beautiful ayah that breaks down for us the fact that neither of us should be seeking rights that are for the other one. Neither of us should be trying to covet and be jealous and be sort of seeking out the rights that were given to somebody else. And this ayah specifically mentions the rights given to men and the rights given to women. And this ayah, wallah, is so important in this age of where there is, you know, we were dealing with things like feminism and, and indeed other movements and other belief systems and other, you know, things like that, where there is a desire to covet the rights that have been given to someone else by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ultimately, again, this is nothing more than an extension of atheism where we no longer care about the rights of Allah, but we only care about huquq al-ibad. And one of the things that makes when you care only about the huquq of the ibad, the rights of the servants, and you don't care about the rights of Allah, then no doubt this leads to selfishness, and it leads to coveting what other people have. Because you no longer accept that it was Allah that gave each person their haqq, their right, in anything, in everything be it gender related or related to anything else, Allah Azza wa Jal gave every single person a haqq, a right. We want to give everyone the right. فَأَعْطِي كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَّ We want to give everyone the right that they have. When we start to look at things and ignore the fact that it was Allah that gave out those rights, what happens? We start to crave what other people have. Why don't I have what that person has? Why am I not allowed equally the same right and the same authority that that person has? And so on. And it leads to a destructive cycle where each person is craving to have what the other person has. It leads to jealousy, it leads to hatred, and it leads to ignoring the rights of Allah As we said, this is nothing more than an extension of atheism that neglects the fact that Allah is the one that gave rights to people. And it's not about me being better than someone else. How many women will be above their husbands Yawm Al Qiyamah? And I will give you one example, and subhanAllah, the examples in this, they would not stop. Asiya, radiallahu anha, Asiya alayhi salam. Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun. Her husband Fir'aun, where is he? And where is she when the Prophet ﷺ mentioned her to be from the women whose Iman was kamil, complete, full, subhanAllah, it was perfect. So if you look at Asiya radiallahu anha, you look at the situation of her husband Fir'aun in the lowest part of the fire and leading his people into the fire, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, and all of the, the things that he did. But that's just an extreme example. 
In reality, there are many women who are far above their husbands in the sight of Allah Azza But when you live only for this dunya and you only care about this dunya, then you only care about what rights you have in this dunya. I only care about, am I in charge? Am I the one making the decisions? Am I the one that has the most power, the most authority? Am I the one that has the most flexibility? That's all you care about because it's only the dunya. That's the only thing they say. وَمَا هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهْرُ It's only this life of this world we live and we die and it's just the passage of time. Nothing kills us except time. Nothing causes us to die except time. That's what these people believe. And so they lose this concept of accepting what Allah gave you and realizing that what Allah has given to a wife doesn't stop her from being above her husband Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Darajat, many levels. And what Allah has given to the husband doesn't stop him from being above his wife Darajat, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, many levels. It doesn't stop either of them because they have the opportunity to gain the reward from their actions. What you've been given in this dunya is a test. And it is possible for a woman to pass her test and her husband to fail his test. And it's, a pos it's possible for a husband to pass his test and for, a w for his wife to fail her test. It's possible. So ultimately, it's not for us to fight over who was given what. It's for us to look for the nasib, our nasib of our good deeds, our portion of good deeds, and to try and get as many good deeds as possible out of what Allah Azza wa Jal has given us. And when we want something, we covet something, desire something. Instead of being jealous of other people and trying to undermine what Allah has given them, what should we do? Ask Allah from His grace. If you want something, ask Allah Azza wa Jal from His grace. Ask Allah, oh Allah, give me this. Oh Allah, grant me this. Oh Allah, give me this. Instead of trying to take, you know, to try and like be like two spoiled children who are fighting over some candy or something. You know, they're both fighting each other. They're both pulling against each other and arguing with each other. Instead of that, ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give you candy. خلاص. That's it. You know, like instead of fighting each other over one thing and pulling each other, ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give you what it is that you want. And ultimately, we're just giving simple, you know, sort of examples and lighthearted examples. But reality, this issue is quite serious when it comes to marriage. And it can lead to a lot of problems in marriage if we don't understand this. So we talk about the husband's rights and the wife's rights. It's not for the wife to crave and covet what the husband has. Nor is it for the husband to crave and covet what the wife has. Rather, each one of them work to get your nasib, your share, your portion of good deeds from what you have done and ask Allah for His grace and His bounty in order to get where you want to be, which is Jannatul Firdaus Al-A'la, the highest part of paradise. It's not that you just, you know, uh, it's not about this world and it's not about being in charge in this world. And it's not about being in authority in this world. And it's not about having one more right than the person next to you or one more obligation than the person next to you. It's not about those things. It's about working with what you have to get your nasib, your share of good deeds and asking Allah from his bounty and his virtue. And I, I know I've really hammered this point home and, and, and I've talked about it a lot, but I just see it to be such an issue in this day and time, in age where the non-Muslims are putting such immense pressure upon Muslims to stop fulfilling their rights to each other, to, to start coveting what other people have. And it's not just gender, it's not just men and women, it's across the whole spectrum that to try and covet power, covet authority, to try and covet rights that you don't have, to try and be in the place of someone else. Why should this person be over me? Even in knowledge, Refusing to accept the authority of the scholars, refusing to, you know, listen to what the scholars have to say. Why should that person tell me? Why should I not be the scholar who gets to tell? Look at how everyone is just coveting what everybody else has. Everyone is just trying to get. Instead of asking Allah for grace and asking Allah for knowledge and asking Allah and striving for it, perhaps Allah one day will put you in that position. But ultimately, we just live in a time where the pressure on the Muslims is to steal everyone else's, you know, 
rights and to try and seek it and to try and undermine them in it. And that's why so many marriages are failing. It's one of the major reasons why so many marriages are failing. Rather, the woman who is intelligent and the man who is intelligent, they say, what has Allah given me that I can get Jannah with? They don't start looking for what Allah hasn't given me. They ask Allah for His grace. If it's from the things it's permissible to ask for, they ask Allah, oh Allah, give me wealth so I can spend it for your sake. Oh Allah, give me health so I can use it to worship you and so on. But they are looking at what do I have today that can get me Jannah? That's the attitude that the Muslim should have when it comes to the huquq, the rights, and when it comes to the obligations, and when it comes to the qadr and the qada of Allah Azza wa Jal. Let me earn as much as I can from what Allah Jalla fi ula has given to me. So that brings us to the end of this episode, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to continue by looking next time at the areas in which the husband and the wife are totally equal. They have a one-for-one -one right. So al-mumathala at complete equivalence. The rights in which there are complete equivalence. We're going to look at those inshallah ta'ala in the next episode. And until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.